Do you really want to change? There's a story in the New Testament of a man who had an infirmity for 38 years. He hung around a little body of water called Bethesda in the city of Jerusalem. Because there was a tradition that an angel would come and stir the water and whoever got to the water first would be healed. This man believed it. And the problem was he had no one to help him move. One day Jesus walked right up to him and said, I have a question for you. Do you want to be made whole? Now what kind of question is that to ask a man who has a disability who obviously wants to be healed? It's a valid question. That's what kind it is. Because not everybody wants to change. Not everybody wants to get out of the lifestyle they're in. You think that every person who is addicted to drugs or is an alcoholic today wants to be free from that? I'm telling you a lot of them want to stay that way. You go, do you really want to change? You know, there are people standing on street corners. We'll work for food. Is that really what they'll do? I can tell you I've given so many cards out from our church saying, come on over. We'll give you some work. I can only think of one who's ever shown up. I mean, some of them may be willing to work for food, but I think some of them maybe have a habit that they need to support. and It's expensive and they don't want to get out of that lifestyle. That's a lifestyle they've chosen to live in. Or someone else might be in an immoral lifestyle and they really don't want to change and you offer them a way out. They're comfortable there. Some people are at home in their godlessness like a pig is at home in a pigsty. You know, we think, oh, they don't want to live that way. Well, actually, maybe they do. Do you really want to change? You know, I think a lot of times people want to sort of attribute human characteristics to animals these days. You know, they'll dress their animals up. And I mean, I even, I have to admit, I'll talk to my dog and I have no idea why I do it. I'll ask my dog questions. I'll say, how are you? How are you? What have you been doing? What have you been doing? Are you happy? Are you happy dog? Are you happy? You know, he'll quack and say, well, he's a happy dog. Look at him. You know, I, I'll talk. he doesn't ever say anything to me. But I still talk to him. But some people take it a little bit further. You know, they have these little dogs they carry around. I think they're dogs. I've seen rodents larger than some of these dogs. And they're always nervous. He's shaking. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. Probably because they're just so little and they put them in these ridiculous outfits. They're afraid they're going to get beat up by another animal, you know. Don't let me go. Don't let me go. Especially in this outfit. Don't do it. Don't do it. People carry them around like fashion accessories, you know. Oh, look at my little dog, you know. And they have a little place at the table. There they are. That's not what a dog really wants. I, our dog, you know, you will take him and get him washed. Oh, he's so clean now. Look how clean he is. He hates it. The other day he was in our backyard just, just in the back of the bushes. And he was just sitting there as happy as a clam. This is where I want to be. In dirt. Not smelling like soap. Some people don't want to change. They don't want to get out of the behavior that they're in. They prefer the dark ways of eternal death. Oswald Chambers said, quote, sin enough and you will soon be unconscious of sin, end quote. And some don't even know how bad it's become.